Thank you very much, Riv. Great cast of the day once again. Now, Zyrene, we had a very controlled game from Counterlogic Gaming. The start of the split going very well for them, putting out a really cool almost poke comp in this. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of what they were running before when they were winning games last season. Nidalee and Ezreal. Exactly. They're running a lot of poke, a lot of disengage, a lot of things that can get around the map and then take objectives because they didn't lose a single turret because they had the rotational play and they were on top of it. Yeah, and it's really cool seeing how the actual comp worked out in specifics. You've got uh, the centerpiece of the AP Kogma, right? Actually really good burst for a poke champion as long as you kind of get that first hit in. And all the champions that were picked fit so well with the composition. So having some kind of ranged lockdown, like a Sejuani or in this case an Ash, is very good. It's not about engaging with your body, it's about just locking someone down so that Cog can follow up. Ash sets up Cog really well. The other lineup are all disengage or defensive focused tanks. Headbutt, Lee Sin Kick, Maokai in general, the king of defensive top lane tanks. So they're all centered around the fact they can set up Pobalthus Kogma, and if something happens, they can all meet wall in front and keep things from going badly. It honestly works really well. Yeah, I feel like the Kogma was kind of late game insurance policy for them. Because mm. I feel like everybody else on that team is really good at picking people off and catching them out in rotation. And the Kogma sure. was kind of like, if it doesn't work out, then we have at least the AP Kog'Maw to fall back on. Because okay. they were using the Ash Arrow, just sending it down mid lane when it's like, Shifter's going to engage. He got caught by an arrow. First blood was arrow down bottom onto Core JJ. That's how they're getting their advantages, were these picks. And then that's how I kind of feel about the Kog'Maw on the comp. Okay, I guess just to me, I guess, I think, anyway. to me, I feel like both are true. Where like, you're right, they have all these cool pick potential, and then also their Siege is quite good with, the, with that same sort of group of five. Yeah. So either way, though, we're not just talking about the composition in theoretic, we're talking about an actual clip in this game. If we can pull it up on the screen, it's uh, fairly late in the game. CLG's already got a pretty big lead, but it's one of the only roughly close team fights this game had. These guys are amazing because right here, this just came out. That right there. That bowl is going to hit nobody. And that's going to make, that's going to make Gamsu have to come up from right here. He's going to engage the back line and he's going to go after double lift. He's going to try to get on double lift. And because this doesn't hit and also they only get a little bit of the fear off. Like, Pobelter is okay. He doesn't get hit by the fear from Hecarim. That's going to cause Shifter to have to overcommit to kill Double Lift, which gets Shifter killed as well. So as we roll this clip out, you're going to see Bola doesn't stun anybody. Then you're going to see Shifter's poking. He gets hit on, cleanses, runs up. He's out of this fight. He can't do autos. Gamsu goes through, doesn't fear Pobelter, and they hit Double Lift back. Now Shifter has to commit for Double Lift, and he goes too deep into the fight. He's pulling himself backwards. He's singled out by Pobelter at this point. And then Afromu and the rest of the team is doing zone control up at the front so that their front, their back line cannot get to the back line of CLG. And Pobelter cleans house on that one. Yep. So the failed ultimates were really what made that fight there. It was actually pretty impressive. Shifter's ulti nearly won the fight for them because yeah. it knocked all the tanks back. And suddenly it's just Kogma and Ash stuck on the other set of Sand Soldiers. But what if the other ulties had hit? Alistair and Lee Sin, well, also, I mean, just keep in mind, Alistair yeah. and Lee Sin, like, knocked Hecarim back out anyway. Like, they nearly could have 2v2'd the back line. That fight could have been very different. But, of course, good play by all of CLG. Nice try by Dignitas, of course, really a, a wonderful start to the season for the new CLG lineup. Either way, congrats to them for the 1-0. But for now, we're going to send it over the dash for some interviews. Thank you, gentlemen, here with Poe Belter and Aframu. After a very solid, methodical victory there, we saw a fairly low kill until the later stages of the game. And that's what I kind of want to throw to you, Aframu. It was brought up uh, pretty quickly into the game that it seemed like you guys were reverting back to what was working for you during the regular season of last split in terms of play style. Mm -hmm. um, I think we discovered ourselves a little bit better with uh, our new members coming in as well in uh, Paul Belter. So it's uh, really nice to have a lot of damage that we can, you know, count on to be there in a uh, late game Kog'Maw pick that we had. So it was nice, but I thought Dignitas also played really well and they countered what our 2v1 strategy was to make it even. Uh, but in scrims, you know, it wasn't going that way. We were really far ahead, of course. That's how it happened last split as well. But <laughs> Yeah, Dignitas actually played really well. It's just their, you know, execution, planning, and team fight afterwards was really poor. All right, well, now to that end, the additions that you guys have made to this split, we've got Poe Belter as well as Huhi coming in. Poe Belter, for you yourself, how do you feel the transition has been from Winter Fox to CLG so far? It's been, like, really great. Uh, I knew it would be probably an upgrade because obviously CLG plays higher than Winter Fox. Winter Fox got relegated, so I knew it would be a little better, but I feel like I fully trust all my teammates, and, and I, I don't know, I just think they're all really good, and so it's really nice to play on a team like this. And so how exactly uh, 
is scrimming going to work once we have who he here? Because I think there's going to be some, you know, a lot of people are curious as to how the, you know, the dual mid laner thing is going to work. So when we've got both mid laners here and present for all weeks, you know, dividing time between the team and actually being able to level up the team synergy with both mid laners has got to be difficult. Um, yeah, honestly, that's up to our coaching staff. That's to their discretion. Um, I'm not privy to like how exactly it will be handled, but you know, I trust that they'll do a good job. Uh, at the moment, do you feel that there is a, you know, a glaring difference between the two of you as mid laners, a strength that you bring and a strength that he brings that's going to allow you guys uh, the capabilities to put more strategies into practice? Who he's actually still in Korea working out his visa with management, so he hasn't been able to, I, well, I haven't seen him come over and scream with the team yet, so I'm not exactly sure so far. But um, I'd say generally, like, I'm more of a risky player and I'll put myself in a riskier position and use my own summoners to deal more damage, but he just likes to play more methodically. So nice. I think that's the difference. Well, and so then on the other side of things, we had some support staff changes. We have Zixlol moving up into kind of like the head. Like, uh, how did uh, Kobe uh, named it like the analyst with power, you know, essentially. Uh, and then we have um, Blurred Limes coming in. How has the shuffling around of management been for you guys so far? Uh, it's more defined in what our coaching staff's roles are. So we have Chris, who's our new coach, who handles more lifestyle stuff, as well as, you know, the egos that we have on the team and attitudes and he really just breaks it down and kicks our asses essentially <laughs> when we you know <laughs> screw up uh he also makes us have a lot of physical activity so good. Like in That's the morning thing. we'll do a lot of stretching we'll run we'll go play basketball 3v3 or something like that so it's pretty cool and then we have tony sir tony coach gray that's what we call him sir tony coach gray yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like oh. it who is more of the strategical mind and sets up our picks and bans, uh, talks with us how to play the game, what champions we should be playing, so he does the more, you know, that kind of stuff. Right, so this time around, the composition that we saw you guys build, we had the Kog'Maw for that late game, uh, poke, and just high amounts of damage as well as we saw the Lee Sin come back in and the Alistair with the Maokai. So a very solid front line with, uh, you know, Smithy building full tank on that Lee Sin. Is this kind of what the new mid lane situation is allowing you to do, put a lot of pressure on the two carries and a, and a massive support system between the other three players? Uh, honestly, it's just how the meta is right now. Uh, we're playing the tank meta. So really, it's just like when most of the bands are towards all the tanks that are OP, you know, you have Gragas, Rek'Sai, who's really tanky, uh, sometimes Sejuani's banned. So really, it just goes down in the tier list. Who's the next most tanky champion that you should pick? <laughs> And then you have just have a solid back line with long range that you can kill people with, and that's usually how the meta goes right now. All right, well, we've seen Ash come to fruition. I, for one, am very excited about that champion coming back into the meta. You know, finally, uh, I do want to get you guys' thoughts on the other top-tier teams, you know, coming into this split. We saw C9 and TSM uh, play it out earlier in a very exciting match. Poe Belter, thoughts on those two teams, the way that the C9 roster is uh, incorporating Incarnation and, and TSM coming out of MSI uh, after, after that game? Um, I think that that game in particular, it was kind of weird actually because TSM, it feels like they should have won that game because Bjergsen was up like 100 CS in mid lane, but ultimately C9 just had the better team comp. They had um, Rumble, Kogma, I think, versus, uh, what was it, two immobile carries. And once it gets late enough in the game, then they can just pretty much kill your backline without the without TSM's backline being able to deal any damage. So I think that game was won more so on picks. Um, I mean, TSM and C9 obviously still going to be two of the best teams in NA. Right. So into that into that <laughs> end, right? We've seen where two of the best teams, uh, you know, are as of right now. We've had a good litmus test for you know where one and two are at the beginning of this season. We've now watched you play. You guys have had your first try on the LCS uh, stage with this roster, Aframu. How do you feel the outlook of your season is? You know, I, I'm, I'm asking you to project nine weeks into the future mm. here when we're approaching playoffs. But do you feel that this CLG roster with the new coaching staff and the ability to swap out mid laners? you know, will find their spot back up in the, you know, in that top echelon of teams? Um, I'd like to quote Darshan on this, where he says we're going to be a top three team by the end of the split. So 
That's there what I believe is. as well. All right. Well, glad to hear it. Once again, gentlemen, congratulations on the victory starting the split off right 1-0. and Team 8 and Team Impulse are loading onto the stage and will face off in our fourth match of the day. So don't go anywhere. The North American LCS continues after this. Back at <gasps> LCS, boys. The dream. Hey, man. This is what like was about. a pillow. Down towards Crap. Oh, Melker a little too antsy in the pantsy. He misses the last soldier. Zingy. <laughs> we can walk forward. I'm on yeah, set. Set. He's He's set. Set. Arrow 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 set. Come back, come back. back, wait, 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 no, no, back no, no. Five seconds on pull. Five seconds on pull. Hecarim's gonna home guard. Hecarim's gonna home guard. Come on, 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 come on. Can't do much to get out of this one. It's a flash in from Aphromu as well. And Core JJ is just completely caught out of position. Following behind, Eludin's Echo blows up and hits Kiwi Kid as well. They're all very low. Double lift getting the double kill on this one. CLG takes down Team Dignitas.